You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Scottish Football Show right here in SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, your host is always like to be here. Shankers is with me as every week. Shankers, what's happening this week? Hi, good good weekend. Uh, good to see a few familiar faces in ways as well this week. We've, we've went local. We went local with two guests for, for the Ayrshire area. We're joined first of all by former Rangers, former Glen Afton, now at Cumnock, Kyle McCausland. Kyle, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the show, mate. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, mate. Um, How you been? You good? Aye, good, mate. Good. As good as you can be, I suppose, with all the time <laughs> COVID that's going on, but aye, good. And I've I've went local as well. I've went somebody who's just round the corner. Ryan McChesney, former Glenafton man. Pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. You good? Uh, aye, thanks for having me, pal. Just the same it's, as well as can be. Hey, with all the COVID stuff, and it's the same for every day now, and it? it's a wee bit of banter. <laughs> he's missing. He's missing kicking a ball. He's he's just wanting to get back playing as soon as possible. Aye. To be fair, he's missing. Man, he done that. Yeah, he's back. He's ball. Back to kick. We'll touch on a few things later on in the show, but we'll start off with touching on some results. We'll obviously touch on the six results over the weekend in the Premiership. Celtic 1-2-1 at home to Motherwell. Welsh and Edwards scored for Celtic with Campbell replying for Motherwell. Hibs 1-2-0 against Aberdeen. Martin Boyle with two goals. Livingston's run came to an end with a 2-1 defeat to St. Johnson at home. Today United beat Ross County 2-0 away from home. St. Mirren 2, Kilmarnock 0. And today we saw Hamilton get a last gasp equaliser to beat the leaders, hey, draw with the leaders Rangers 1-1. Shankers, we'll start off with the game today at the Super Seal Stadium. Rangers were flat, I would say, for Passel 1. I just didn't think they get going at all. A late equaliser. Got Hamilton a well-deserved point. What were your thoughts on the game? I just what you said there. Hamilton thoroughly deserved a point. And, and Rangers couldn't really argue with that, I don't think. They were very flat. Nothing it wasn't direct. Everything was kind of side-to-side. few chances here and there, but not, nothing major. And I don't know what it is that the guy uh, that was asking McGregor in the interview after it was asking if they were getting complacent, but they shouldn't they be because it's not as if they've, they've won anything yet. Nothing's won yet. They've won, they've won a few games, but I think uh, there was a few changes that were maybe they were forced up front way way in. But I don't think uh, Zungu needed to come into the team, and and he when he come off and, and Jack and Davis come on, it, it kind of lifted that a, a slightly better than what it was. But I don't think Rangers can complain with the the point, did they? Kyle, what were your thoughts on the game as well? well the exact same as what Shankers was saying there. Um, the, the first half especially was really, really scrappy. Um, there wasn't much in it at all. Uh, no kind of real quality. Um, a couple of kind of crosses in um, for kind of both teams, but apart from that, um, obviously I think the second half when um, Jack came on and Davis came on, as Shankers touched on, obviously when Zungu went off, I thought Rangers looked a lot, lot better. Um, started playing a lot more forward, um, creating chances. Um, but again, man of the match for Rangers, Alan McGregor. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's seen, he's seen the start during the game. That means he's most uh, saves this season in one individual game against who should be the worst team in the league. <laughs> um, so obviously it wasn't, it wasn't a, a good day at the office for Rangers, when they say. Um, at the end of the day, still unbeaten. It's a point. It again, goes towards potential lifting the, the trophy, obviously, coming at the end of the season. But I don't think Steven Gerrard and the rest of the boys have obviously been happy with the day's performance. No, definitely. Chessie, would you be able to defend a Barisic cross? <laughs> nah. He could defend <laughs> a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, he's got some quality, but it's the same. as can't really say much more than what the boys said there. Yeah, really, if Rangers were very good, cool, I would do, but they still got the unbeaten record, didn't they? Mm-hmm. I just, I don't agree with the Astro grass parts like in the Premiership. I mm-hmm. just, I think they should be pied all together. Like, I just don't agree with that in the Premiership. You see the conditions today, you know what I mean? It was snowing, it was fucking freezing. I mean, the last mm-hmm. thing today has been playing on an Astro part in the day like that. 
That's probably how probably how like Jack and Davis didn't play. Jack's right. just back with a kind of bad injury. I think no. last Gerald's interview for the game, he was saying he was just back for an injury. That was almost indicating I'm not want to risk him on the on the Astro uh, with like Europe and stuff like that coming up. But for me, it's still play your best players when, when they're available mm-hmm. but yeah, again yeah. The, Astro, the Astro gets blamed when, when you drop points but it doesn't even you win I suppose it's one of the things isn't it yeah definitely Celtic got a win as well 2-1 at home tomorrow Shankers what, what was your thoughts on that? I think the, after uh, Wednesday night or Tuesday night against Kilmarnock you, you can expect them to go and maybe a wee run and, and put some put some points together it's it's been a long while for they've went one, three, four games in the bounce, so I think they'll be looking to do that. But still, still conceding a goal. I know they never get beat, but they're, they're still conceding goals, which is obviously not what they're wanting. But I, I think they'll just take a win at, at any uh, any shape or form. Now. But, uh, I, but what I've, what I heard was they kind of held on a wee bit at the end. How true that is, I don't know. But uh, three points is is what they'd be looking for, and that's what they got. Yeah, definitely. As well as that, we'll touch on Livingston. Livingston's run came to an end. Kyle, it was a big result for St. Johnson. But what was your thoughts on the, the game? Definitely. I think you don't actually realise how good a, a run Livingston were actually on. That was them unbeaten in 14 games up until mm-hmm. yesterday. Um, the last time they beat against St. Martin way back in November. I mean, so it's been a, a, a great run. Um, you see, obviously, Martin down the, the, the press last week while we... Um, He's fitting proper to a manager and everything else. So they're, they're, obviously they're getting a good bit of um, press on that just now. Um, obviously a, a, a good result for, for St. Johnson. Um, obviously they'll be, imagine, hoping to try and put a run on just now to try and stretch away for kind of bottom of the league. Um, and obviously there are a couple of games in hand for a couple of teams down there just now. But um, same again, I think. Obviously Robinson have had a great season. Um, sitting just now, whether they can actually win a couple of more games again and put more pressure on Aberdeen to, to kind of clinch top four. Um, I think it would be an, an unbelievable achievement for, like you say, Livingston, with obviously the teams that are in the league and budgets and everything else. I mean, I think it would be a, a great season for them if they managed to clinch top four. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Chelsea, Jank, Derry McInnes has come under a bit of pressure at Aberdeen. Another poor definitely. result. He's put a bit of pressure. Just because the seasons he's had before this one, they've been up there and thereabouts. So he's... Obviously, it's that this season, so he's got a bit of pressure on himself. Mm. But you don't know what it's. Aberdeen's a hit or a miss, aren't they? It's one week they're good against Rangers, they agree Rangers a game, and the next week they get and they get beat for Ross County. Mm. They're just one of the kind of teams. It's as if they play decent in the big games and they struggle against the rest. Shankers, what do you think about McInnes? I said during the week when we were talking that because it's Chelsea said, but see, because they've done so well, he's been consistently the third best team in the country. Some he finished above Rangers uh, a few years ago when Rangers come back into the league. But uh, I don't know, there's a lot of Aberdeen fans not happy. Is, is it time for change to freshen things up? But then again, you go, can, can he do any more than what he's already done before? F- consistently finishing third and, and challenging for cups, cup semi finals or whatever. The, do they really want to, want to change it? And then when they realise they've, they've got somebody else that they're not as good as what, what they were when McInnes changed it, is the, is the grass always greener kind, kind of thing? I don't know. It's it's strange, I think, because of what McInnes has done before at Aberdeen. I think that'll be, be why he's still there and why he'll still be in a job in, mm-hmm. in the years to come. Mm-hmm, definitely. And our team I want to touch on is Kilmarnock. We're hearing rumours tonight that Tommy Wright is close to agreeing a deal to become the Kilmarnock manager. Kyle, do you think that's a good appointment for Kelly? I think it's a, a great appointment for Kelly. Um, you see the job he done at St. Johnson for a number of years. Can he similar to Livingston this season, making the budgets and everything else? I mean, punching well above their weight um, in Perth. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, l- l- listening to his um, Tuesday night, obviously we were talking about the, the Kelly Celt- uh, Celtic game. It's It's been a, obviously a bit of a rough time since obviously Steve Clark's left. Um, obviously, as you said, trying Alessio, trying bits and bobs now as well with Dyer. Um, but can he similar again to what Aberdeen's like? I mean, I don't think anybody's going to come close to, to what Steve Clark done. Um, I, I, mean, I think if, you, if you're asking a Kilmarnock fan, what's a good season? What's, what, what he's expecting? Um, 
two or three seasons ago, they've been oh well, we want to challenge Aberdeen, want to challenge Hibs to be in the top three, top four teams. But the way it's gone just now, I mean, they're in a bit of a, a kind of free fall just now, aren't they, really? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's obviously worrying times, but I, I do think if Tommy Wright gives in, he'll kind of steady the ship again and it's, it should be a right good um, managerial appointment for, for Kelly. Shank, as we spoke of, me, you and Wilson spoke a lot about Kilmarnock on the show. What's, what's your thoughts on Tommy Wright? I know our usual regular at Wooden, but <laughs> isn't very happy with Tommy Wright going in, but what's your thoughts on it? As Kyle said, it's a steady appointment. He, he knows the league, knows how to work in a tight budget and, and he knows how to get the best out of players that, no, I'm not saying they've not got quality, but he knows how to get the best out of a hard-working group of players that, that he takes in Johnson to Europe. Uh, was he there when they won the Scottish Cup? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Aye, mm-hmm. so, so as, and as Kyle said, we've said before, Steve Clark, Kelly, Kelly were punched above their weight with Steve Clark and and the fans maybe just need to lower their expectation because that's not gonna that's a one off season for a team like Commander. They're not gonna be challenged. I challenge for the top six every year, but they're not gonna be up there for the uh, third and fourth place for, for European places uh, European places. They're not gonna do that with the budget they've got. I think they just need to get, get a manager in, try and get a bit of consistency in, in this season that they just need to try and stay in the league first and then mm-hmm. that's all the Tommy Wright will be doing, try to keep them in the league and then build on it for next season. But I think it's a good appointment and I think it's it's wise what the board's done because they could go and gamble with somebody and and then it, it completely goes the uh, completely goes in free fall so they so I think I think it's a good appointment and, and steady enough. Yeah, we'll move on to our, our special guest, Kyle and Ryan. We'll start off with, with Ryan. See, when you were growing up, did you play football when you were young? Uh, I, I was playing. Well, I started off at Shankly, Shankly Cherry Pickles, and all like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then John Stewart eventually coached me into signing with the Lions. And then I had a wee stand at Pro Youth with Aya and Rangers and that. And then I just ended up staying with the Glens. And it's been on for there. <laughs> hey, well, you started off at Rangers as well. Like, what, were your, what were your early days like when you were at Ibrox? I went. Um, kind of similar again to Chesey. Obviously, the kind of boys club were coming to juniors and at United uh, for a few years and then obviously on to Rangers. Um, but brilliant memories. Um, I mean, lucky enough to to go to Italy, lucky enough to go to Holland to compete in tournaments. I mean, when you're 15, 16, 17, do you know what I mean? For a, a boy for coming up, do you know what I mean? It's kind of unheard at times, I suppose. Um, but no, but I went a complete, obviously, shock to the system. Do you know what I mean? When you've went for United um, and you're training on school parks, then you got to Murray Park and it's, I mean, obviously, the, the whole part-time environment and the full-time environment. Um, obviously, so professional. Uh, but no, but I went. See, when you were coming through Rangers, when you were like youth days, who was, who was the good players you were playing alongside that at that time? We had a, we had a right good age group, um, probably from kind of under 16s to maybe under 18s, under 19s. Um, my age, uh, Dylan McGeeck mm-hmm. was in with us. Um, obviously, Shankers, I know, Adam Hunter, uh, Ants Merengue. So, boys, <laughs> we went on to Air United. Um, a year above me had. Gordon Dick, Reese McCabe, Carl May Smith, Darren Cole, uh, Kane Hemmings. I mean, boys who are still playing at a high level, obviously, to, to this day. Um, so it was, a right, it was a right good age group um, for those, you know, two, three, four years. And Ryan as well, obviously, yeah, what were your early days like at Gone Affen? At the juniors? Oh, the boys club. Boys club. Ah, uh, very good. Uh, but... Went over to Benedon. Oh, that was with Shankly, sorry. Went to Benedon with Shankly. That was a stag do, Ches. No, no. Hey, that to... was Ali Park stag do, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to Benedon with Shankly. I played a few tournaments over there. And then I went to... Was it, I think it was Barcelona I went to with the Glenarsham Boys Club. And then we played a tournament in there as well, so... I was lucky enough to travel a bit as well at the boys' club, playing a few tournaments abroad. And then, well, then you get when you're not get to the Scottish Cup final with your, with your boys' club team, Jesse. Are you playing? Uh, uh, Hutchie Vale. It was uh, 3 1 in the final. So they did. Bad day. They, they, was, 
I missed a shit <laughs> a lot <day. laughs> there. I was well, well known for, for bringing players through and that and, and Edinburgh Hutch to well, kind of a feeder club for, for Hibs and Hearts. Uh, boy Gary Glenn, I think, came for Hutch yeah, right. my year. So mm. either... See when you were Kyle, okay, see when you were at Rangers, obviously when administration came in, like did you did you think like when you obviously when you were in the third division that you'd be you'd be going into the first team? It was a it was a right strange, strange time. Um I think obviously it's I mean well documented with players and members of staff and fans alike. Um I mean I, I was I was driving home for training one of the days, um coming into Kilmarnock and it come over the radio, uh, Rangers went in administration. I'd, I'd left Murray Park what half an hour ago, forty minutes ago, none the wiser. Um, so it was obviously it was a, it was a right strange, strange time. Um, and then you're talking obviously about the kind of money that some of the players were on, and I mean we had meetings as youth team players to take wage cuts. I mean boys would be earning anything for I don't know maybe seventy quid a week to maybe three hundred, four hundred pound a week. In the grand scheme of things, is pennies. I mean you're trying to save millions and millions. Um, but there always was that kind of thought that. Well, you'll you'll read in the press and it's like Alan McGregor's gonna leave, Steve Davis is gonna leave. I mean Lee McCullough and you're thinking, well, there, there could be a chance. Um but it's one of the ones. I mean you you weren't the, you weren't the sure whether you were gonna have a contract at youth team, let alone at kind of first team level. Um so it was a, it was a right scary daunting time, I suppose, for for players and members of staff alike. Is there any stories that stuck out for that time that you just thought, what on earth's happening here? So it was strange. So whatever day it was, it came over the news. Um, the next day, straight into training, um, and it was just meetings all, all day. So we're in the morning, and um, yeah, you had board members that were there from the administrators, and it was a case of right guys who've decided we need to place the club in administration. Um, this has been a hard decision. This has been, but it's no one that's been taken lightly. Um, but this is kind of what we need to do. And uh, Sandy Jarden uh, was in the meeting because it was ourselves and the kind of coaching staff and um, I mean the cleaners, uh, groundskeepers, the lot. And Sandy Jarden was going absolutely mental. Um, I mean this is, I mean Rangers an, inst- an institution. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, this is my club. This has been for, and for generations, and I mean you guys are just. Basically taking the piss with it. Um, I said so it was all just it was just surreal. So is that you're thinking a team that was, I mean, in the UEFA Cup final. I mean, a, a few years before mm-hmm. could overnight be nothing. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was strange. Mm-hmm. Chase, you see when you went into the Glenavon team and you won, you won the league in 2012. How good a feeling was that to to lift that trophy? Your that buzzer. was good uh, because we. It was a weird one because we won our last game, but shots were shots were playing the day after us, and we needed them to get beat. To, so we were just waiting on that result. So we all travelled up to shots, and I can't even remember who they were playing, and they got beat. So we were all just celebrating at the side of shots' is back because <laughs> we'd won it. So we did. So uh, it was good. So it was. Uh, uh, Kyle, see when you went, you broke into the Rangers first team. What was the uh, what was the relationship like with Alan McCoy? I suppose it was a kind of a strange one again. Um, good at times for the fact it was, I mean, you young boy coming in, but trying to get a hold of the guy was fucking murder. Um, <laughs> so I'd so I'd made my debut. Um, because I think it was, I think it was a Moose and Krabari. We get injured in the warm up. Um, so it was, it was a case you did in the warm up, and the next thing it's like you're, you're starting. So it was a bit of kind of a, a kind of whirlwind. I mean, you, you didn't have time to really think about it. Um, so obviously, made my debut in the, the Ramsden's Cup against uh, Albion Rovers. Uh, played obviously a couple of games, and then um, Foster and the likes obviously came in the team, so you can get bombed a wee bit. Mm. So for the next kind of three, four weeks, you're chasing the guy around a bit more apart, trying to. To speak to him, uh, he come up to see me after lunch. He'd go up after lunch and he'd bury him. Um, <laughs> yeah, that early the next morning, and I uh, will speak to you after. Uh, it's fine, and then you try again, and nothing. So I was just kind of stalking him for three, four weeks to try and speak to him to ask right what's happening. Basically, I uh, weird. 
See when you see when you went on air. What was your memory like traveling the car with Shankles? <laughs> well, we, uh, I don't know how many songs he sung every single day. <laughs> uh, Blaring him and Dan McGill. Uh, McGill, oh. gone mental. Um, obviously, I, I've I've known Shankles for years. Do you know what I mean? For obviously staying in the area. Um, so obviously, I spoke to him. Spoke to as I said, Ella Adam and Ange Marenghi, uh, who had left Rangers that season. Or the season before, to go to what a zimmer that boy! Oh, <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> I'm going the, most, the most laid back guy you've ever met in your full entire hey, life. How, uh, how talented he was! was oh, unbelievable. It would, it would do things just a, an unbelievable left footed player. Oh, it would do right. something and you would just stare at him and look, right. what's going on here? <laughs> we, we, we played, we played Sunderland under 18s in a pre season game and he chipped the goalie for about 45 yards <laughs> and then just walked away. And we were like, Mate, you've just scored the fucking world, do you know what I mean? Right. You just, ah, it's fine, just that's what it is. Unbelievable, though. What a player, Shankers. What's your memories? Oh, it was obviously a good time. When we were at air, you were, were you there about kind of two seasons, yeah, I can a season and a half. Right? Uh, so the, the first kind of season wasn't that good. That was where I kind of played more that season. That's probably how we nearly got relegated, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't that good. But uh, the second season we were challenging for the for the playoffs and that, uh, but I was struggling to get in the team for for folk like Kevin Kyle. I mean, they, they were not ended up leaving. <laughs> but, uh, it was a strange one though because I mean the first season I was there. I mean you you boys that played down south, boys that played in the top level of Scottish football, and I think we stayed up maybe the second last game of the season, something like that. For the last I game mean, like Ozzy McCann who played with Hearts and Dunfermline and that. I just, I just I think it was maybe Marco maybe at this is Cell. I think he signed a lot of players that, that he was part of the way and, and played against and played away. Nah. And it, it didn't work like that. It's all right getting getting a team and a side team together for the Power League or something like that. But it's <laughs> not gonna it's not gonna win your league. It's, it's always gonna be Ken Foyts and stuff like that. And we probably we probably uh, never done as well as we should have for the players that we got. But it was good times. So I don't can regret any any of the times, good memories and that. Jesse, you you solidify your place in the the Glenarvan team, then you you get to the cup final against Hurlford. A day a day you want to forget, a day you want to forget. Aye, it's a day I want to forget. But <laughs> every time I play Hurlford at Talbot, I get reminded of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'll ever, I ever will forget it to be honest. But no, it's one of the things I just. I had a nightmare, to be honest. There's not really anything else I can say. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few of them over the years. <laughs> Leads us to our first question as well. We've got a question. We, we opened the floor for questions and got a few in. Obviously, we, we said who was coming on. And Craig Menzies, a teammate of both of you, asked, we like to ask uh, Chessie, what's the Talbot, what did the Talbot and Covenant fans think of you? <laughs> And he basically says, ask, ask Chessie about some of the shouts he used to receive from the fans when he played local rivals Ock and Lake and Cumnock. I don't know if you can say <laughs> half the things that you uh, used to uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I, I was about to say that. I, 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 I could repeat anything. <laughs> big, Is that bad? Big, big junkie. That's <laughs> you know. <laughs> it makes it funnier, yeah. but when you turn around and the guy that's shouting it's got three teeth. <laughs> oh, ah, come on, Dougie. <laughs> no, nah, but I've, nah, it's just the usual. I get called that, you get called a black, whatever, all oh, that kind of stuff. You're a big ginger twat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a fair, that's a fair assessment. Uh, like <laughs> but you do just you, laugh it off. Do you, do you laugh it <laughs> off, though? Or do, you find, do, you, do you get pressure playing the games that see like Ock and Light and come that you get? Do you feel pressure playing because you're local? No, not so much. I enjoy that, to be fair. Seeing the shit out, I just smile at them. <laughs> Stuff like that. It doesn't bother me at all, really. But it boils you if you're giving it back to them and then tell that I come not school and you're like, <laughs> 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 I've heard that a few times. Brilliant. <laughs> Kyle, see when you... Obviously, you'd loan spells at Dunfermline and Alla as well. Did you just get the feeling that it wasn't going to work at Rangers? Yeah, what I said earlier, um, I mean, trying to, to speak to Alan McCoyst and say, look, I, I've played, I think I'd played four or five games at that point. Um, 
the, the, the game before the, the transfer embargo got lifted. Uh, played East Fife at home and uh, set up Lee McCulloch's heart track. And I played really, really well. And I was thinking, well, brilliant. I mean, I've kind of bedded myself in a wee bit. Um, so it was that kind of one you're feeling a wee bit kind of hard done by. Um, obviously, looking back on it, I mean, you had a boy there that was on pennies and you brought in Richard Foster, who would have been on, I mean, you could have been in five grand, ten grand a week. So by a case of why is he, you know, why are we paying this guy this money and him no playing? Um, so I, I was, obviously, you never wanted to leave. But it was one of the ones where you want to go and play first team football somewhere. Um, a lot better than, I mean, at that point, training with the under 13s and under 14s at one point um, and completely bombed out of absolutely everything. So it was kind of, it was good to go in and get back into a first team environment, I suppose. We, I mean, play big, big boys football, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. See, when you're see, see the thing that I don't get, see, like, when you, you get put out in loan for Rangers, you get put in loan to Air, who are on the same division. So, it, well, what, what's the, the difference? What's the difference between playing in a Rangers team in that division and a, an Air team in that division? You know I mean, you're playing at the same level, so and and you could, you're arguably at that time just as good as what Ricky Foster could have been at Rangers. So it's it's stupid. The, the first the first season I get loaned out, so was Rangers were obviously in the bottom division mm-hmm. in A United on the division above. And that season, I mean, you were I was playing well and I mean getting good good reviews for Air fans, Rangers fans, everything else. And then obviously the second season, I well, we've not been really fair on you. Um you can give back out and loan basically. And I'm like, well, I want to try and stay and I mean you're fighting for your place. I mean you're not want to get in loan. But when you've got either you're training with the thirteens or thirteens or you're getting out and loan, I mean it's an easy it's an easy option. <laughs> um but as I say that's one of the things, I mean, it's, it's happened to boys a lot better than me and at the same time it happened to boys a lot worse than me. So it's one of the things when you're at a, a kind of big club, do you know what I mean? Who was the one player for that that time? Obviously, there was a few that, that broke through that kind of time, but who was the one player you thought would go on and be, be big time? I think it was kind of easy to see, like say, like Lewis McLeod when he, when he burst onto the scene. Do you know what I mean? Me, Lewis was, was frightening at times. Um I mean, just taking the ball, passing, scoring. So, I mean, a right hard to be guy as well. I mean, wouldn't they, wouldn't they jump out for many tackles? Um, I think, unfortunate for him, you've seen that he's had a few kind of bad injuries, obviously, the last mm-hmm. many years. And mm-hmm. that's obviously um, no help to him at all. Uh, but there was, a, there was a good few boys. I mean, young boys, Barney Mackay, again, fucking lightning. Um, so, I went on and made a decent career for himself. Uh, so a good pal of mine, Robbie Crawford. Um, is he in so America? Right? Yeah, Iceland now. And is he Iceland? He's played, he's played, ah, he's played, he's, he was in Iceland, he was, where else has he been? He's been a, a few different countries and he's in America now, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. I think that's where he's playing now in I remember America. McCulloch, remember McCulloch saying a few years ago he was going to be the one he thought would go to, would go really far. We did, uh, it's a pre-season and you're getting, obviously, first day, you're doing your bleak test, you're doing, I mean, how many chin-ups can you do, everything else. First day, uh, Robbie goes in and um, everybody's saying, right, as long as you don't pull it before the goalkeepers, you're all right. I mean, as long as the goalies pull it first, you're fine. Uh, David Templeton pulls it before the goalies. And you're all <laughs> running like, what the fuck's going on here? So you're like, oh, it's all right, it's all right. Goalies pull it. But uh, it got to the stage where they actually stop the bleep test because Robbie was just fucking cruising it. I mean, the guy was the, guy was the white Kenyan. Do you know what I mean? Just <laughs> days and days. But... Such a, 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 I mean, a naturally gifted player. I mean, both feet, first touch. I mean, everything. I mean, it was, it was brilliant. And see, Ryan is uh, Ryan as well. See, when you were you were at Glenafin. Who were the good players at Glenafin that you you kind of played against? That I played against. Aye. Uh, well, I said we done a Q and A thing not long ago, and I said probably the best striker I played against would have been Graham Wilson. Oh my. I always know I'm in for a battle out when I play them because I just know what he's like. I just Elbows. know I need to get the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but I played against Gorms as well, David Gormley. So I had a few battles with him over the years and all. Richie Barr, if you remember him, he was at Pollock. Mm-hmm. A few battles with him as well. So I played a few decent, against a few decent strikers, like. So I have. And obviously, you you end up playing together 
What well, was the uh, what was the partnership like? Did you enjoy playing with one another? We'll start with Ryan. Uh, me and Kyle. Aye. I had a few fights, <laughs> as we <laughs> can say, but that's what happens in fact, isn't it? It's just football. We've got to shout at each other, but after the games, by we're talking and it's all forgotten about. No. That's just what it's like. Kyle, did you enjoy it? Aye, aye. Um, I think, as Shankar said earlier on, I mean, I think the daft team would either a bowling ball, do you know what I mean? One <laughs> yeah, of the right. centre halves, anyway, but obviously the boy, can, the boy can still play, do you know what I mean? He's no. One of the times Ches gets enough kind of plaudits for actually being on the ball, do you know what I mean? And composed and stuff, I think it's. I was going to say that just, as well. He's just, he's just a big, as Ches said earlier on, just a big cooker. <laughs> um, so it's not the case at times, but. But no, I, which as you were saying, I mean, we, we, we travel together. Um, so it's one of the ones you would argue training. You've come on the Saturday, you'd argue on, on Saturday, and then on Tuesday, you'd be best pals again. I mean, got to training. So that's one of the things, though. I mean, it's no, I don't think there's ever been any kind of proper thoughts. You know what I mean? It's just okay. some happens in the heat of the moment, something gets said, and then, I mean, two minutes later, it's forgotten about. Um, what were the highlights for that? Like, Shan, because I'll touch on this for you first, like, were, they, were Ryan and Kyle tough to play against? I always, obviously, I knew Kyle, so sometimes that helps when you know a player, but sometimes it goes against as well because he knows he knows your game as well. I, I kind of with with Chessie as well. I always find that we end we ended up playing at his strengths a lot of the time. We always tell, but always get criticised for for playing a lot of long ball stuff, which we can't really argue with uh, against it. We we kind of mix our game up at times and, and we play right up to his strengths but what Kyle said earlier Chessie does not get enough credit for the fact that he can it's, it's not just a case of he just he does things all the day all day can, he, can, he can play football as well which which goes unnoticed a bit and he, he probably doesn't get respected for it but right tough opponents definitely and obviously the the season you've won the, the treble what was the what was the highlight Ryan for that I'm for just going to go after now right <laughs> and then <I'll> <laughs> <laughs> uh, you on with 10 minutes to go did you did you think you were going to change again me uh, <laughs> too late for that isn't it um, well obviously the cup final if you've got to win a Scottish Cup you're right to beat your arch rivals in the final haven't you and we were luckily enough to do it but the other game that I enjoyed was the Bonnie Rig the two semi-finals against Bonnie Rig were brilliant like for me too uh, because we played them pre-season that year and they gubbed us 5-0 or 6-0 or something but we had a lot of boys missing because it was pre-season so I just thought they, they thought they were coming down for a canter mm. and they couldn't have scored against us for 180 minutes we just they threw out everyone but the kitchen sink kind of, and me Cosy Z Brian we all just stood up to it and they just couldn't break us down in two games so that was a great feeling too because I thought they made really spot they had a bye how good was it? pre-season. Shank, what's, what's your memories of that game? No great? Obviously no great. And and I don't know if the boys agree, but see, when we were up 1-0, when we score against a team, it's it's that's normally almost it. It's it's so hard so hard to get back against us. And, and to be honest, i I never seen it. Seen them coming back. Uh, and to, once we score, we're normally dead. We don't, we don't, we kind of tend to drop deep and stuff like that, and almost see a game out in a in a horrible way. But it, but it's effective. So, so I never really seen it, it coming. But as I said, I, I had nightmares for a week thinking about it. I, I couldn't sleep thinking about about getting beat that game. <laughs> and I, I, there's a lot of thought. But, but he was maybe the same. And at the other side, of it coming feel like got uh, Tracy been a local boy to you come not like it, you don't want to lose a cup final. Any time, but to lose it to, to one of your rivals is probably the, the kind of worst scenario, yeah. and, and obviously it happened. But you couldn't argue with it. I mean, the goal that won the game is fitting to win any game of football. So, and if you if you can beat Andy Leishman for there, you're, you're doing well. I think Big Pee Wee, if he's not in one now, I think Pee Wee missed a header, and he it's, a chance, it's a good chance. And if it goes to now, it's probably a hard way back for us. But luckily, it never went in <laughs> and we <laughs> fought back. <laughs> Was it good for you, Kyle, as well? Like getting into getting into that team and winning winning that well all, all season. What was your highlights of that season? Well, I mean, that was my first year in juniors. 
and you've come in and you've won a treble, you're thinking, this is a fucking doddle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, what for me personally, I mean, going and watching, like you say, coming up games when you're younger, I mean, the standard of the juniors back in the day was was terrible. Do you know what I mean? That was the the coo kickers and I'll just hit a last and tackle that. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think, I think, I mean, the, the juniors now, I mean, there's a, a lot of good, good players in it. I mean, there was boys I was playing playing with and playing against that were as good, probably if no better than some of the boys at Alawa. We were in the championship at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a right good, good standard. Um, but now, as Chase said, obviously the Bonnie Rigg semi-finals were, were good games. Um, there's a few good good games in the Scottish Cup leading up to that. I think that we're, you're kind of maybe getting to kind of January, February time, you're thinking, I mean, I think we've done all right here. Do you know what I mean? You maybe got a chance coming into the season. Um, it was a right, it was a right good, good bunch of boys, and I mean, it was obviously a big squad effort. So, did you think it would be a goal like that that would win you a game? How how good was the goal? That was Cancel's first shot for the sign for the club. I, think, <laughs> I can remember. See, I think that was Cancel's first thought. shot. <laughs> I was standing behind the goals warming up, right? And when the boss came over to him, and he takes the touch to open it up, and I'm going, "What? I'm shoot. No, okay, he's not going to there, man. That's in, bang, that's in. It's one of the ones. I remember when Man City won the league and company had it, and you're almost like, oh, "Let him, let him shoot. He's not going to do it. Then he fits the top goal. No, it's one of the things. It, it was always going to happen when you think about it. Ken, Ken's was one of the boys in training. I mean, he'd be doing the small side of games and crossing and finishing and everything else. I mean, we're scoring fucking brilliant goals. And as Ches was saying, I mean, you have a shot. I mean, if you got a chance to have a, have a dig, have a dig. And mm-hmm. obviously, as Shankar said earlier on, I mean, to be big and day for that distance, I had to be a good one. Mm-hmm. I mean, definitely. Chesey, what was your memory of the, the after party that night? Not much. <laughs> 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 the winnings, the winnings, the bonus we got. I don't think I had any left on the Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was in every house in your corner. Um, <laughs> no, well, look, people, <laughs> people, people still come up and ask me what it was like to play in. And I honestly, I cannot remember half the game. Like, <laughs> honest, I can't even, I don't know why, I just somehow I can't even remember much of the game at all. You know, I just say, I think it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Or was it just yeah. like obviously after that as well, Kyle? Like how was did you did you feel that like you you could have that was you were kind of settled in the juniors? I um I mean, as I said, I mean your first season you won the Scottish Cup, you won the league, you won the evening times. I mean I don't think you could get them any better in this season, do you know what I mean? Um so you're thinking, well, you, you know what it's like with Talbot, and I mean Talbot are there or thereabouts every season and I've been for the last, I mean, what, 10, 15 odd year. Um so I think everybody kind of thought, well, this could be the Glen's chance to try and put their stamp on kind of junior football, I suppose, and be, if you want to say, the kind of new Talbot, you know what I mean? Be challenging for leagues every season, Scottish Cups every season. Um, I mean, obviously, it's no, it's not really turned out that way, do you know what I mean? And Chessie, obviously you play until until the summer. Like, where did you kind of feel? Like, did you feel you had to go and get some foot, get some more football? Or were you kind of thinking, you know, you were kind of watching the state What kind of happened? Um, well, we played Troon in a friendly on the Saturday. And that was our first, like, when our wages were starting. And then we got our wage on the Saturday. And then next thing you came, my phones just started going daft on the Sunday. I was like, what's going on here? And then South had put a message out of a group chat saying he'd resigned. Because the committee's saying that they want to pack it in. And obviously, boys aren't happy because we've been training ourselves for months, obviously, to get ourselves ready for the season. And we're only getting paid or anything. So, obviously, a lot of boys were using like, their own expense to go mm-hmm. and train and stuff. And it just, I actually still don't really know what happened. They just, the committee just put the plug. And it just says the one they want to continue. And was it so for you, obviously, like, if, do, you th- do you think they will come back one afternoon and be a, be a good team again in that league? Uh, I don't know. Hopefully. But it just depends who's want to come back, then not They're obviously going to need a new manager. Who's the new manager got to be? You never know. So we just need to wait and see. But I, hopefully they will. 
Kyle, okay, you obviously went to Cumnock at the, the end of the season. Were you, were you thinking you would be back, kind of? You'd be kind of playing, playing very regular that, that season? My but honest opinion, uh, this season for the football has been for day one. It shouldn't have went ahead. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the kind of governing body, if it was, I mean, the SFA all the way through to whatever. I mean, you're struggling to get Champions League games, World Cup qualifiers, and I mean, getting mm-hmm. played at the highest, highest level. So, I mean, the Lord and you go, you've got, you've got any chance. Um, I mean, in my opinion, so they just come out and say, look, nothing's going to happen to Christmas. And then we'll assess it again at Christmas, January time, we'll see what happens. I mean, a lot of boys would have been, oh, this is shite, as Chesy said. I've been training for 12, 13, 14 weeks here. Says, but there's nothing else should really for it. I mean, you have to mm-hmm. sanitise balls, sanitise goalposts. I mean, turn up to the games in your, your gear and then they'll go we for a shower. We have to sanitise our balls. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was, you have to do all this and then you have to jump in your motor and drive up the road I mean I think everybody was saying that ah, it's fine it's the summer but you know what it's like this time of year so I mean the parts and that are, are terrible mm-hmm. I mean, so it, should, it shouldn't have went ahead I mean it turned into a bit of a farce I mean half the team saying they'll play half the team said they didn't they? Um, I mean it should have been it's either going ahead and everybody's in it or it's no going ahead and that's it well, when we first started training, but you were only about three or four at a training session. Mm-hmm. I mean, stuff like that. So there's just no point to it whatsoever. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a shambles for the start. So I mean, I knew we were we were no keen in playing because you could tell. See, see our training and all that. It just wasn't the same. Normal our trainings, or high tempo, kind of guns blazing, everybody's firing and that. There was just something about it. I just kind of got a vibe that that we were new. Two Keenan playing for the start, and all the players got the same kind of, kind of vibe yeah. of training and all that. But I agree because it, I think the decision should have been took out of the club's hands because all the, each club is is kind of the clubs that haven't played have been slaughtered, and then the ones that are, that are still playing have been slaughtered. And and can it's each to their own, but I think the, the decision should have been took out of the club's hands and the governing bodies because they said should have just made it yeah, you need to play or you don't. But then again, how can you make somebody make teams play during a, a global pandemic? So I, I, I'm agreeing because I don't think it should have, should have went ahead in the first place. You see, what it's, you see what it's like with the juniors anyway. I mean, it's, it's not as if there's a, a multi-millionaire backer for the <laughs> names coming up, Tal, but I mean, brother, take out Darvel maybe, but uh, you know what I mean? Um, so I mean, if there's no fans coming into the games, I mean, you're getting no revenue coming in, so you're not going to pay wages. Yeah. I mean, I mean, boys wouldn't they, wouldn't they have travelled, wouldn't they have turned up? I mean, as Shankar says, I mean, the, the training standards would have been a joke. Um, because it ended up turning into, or it could have turned into, I mean, the club was saying, right, we're going to play this season. And then the players could have said, well, I'm not playing no. for the ages. I, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I'm not wanting to pass it on to my family. I'm not wanting to, do you know what I mean? So it, it could have been, it could have been bad for teams and players and as I said it should have just been taking out everybody's hands straight away and said look it's not happening you know what it's like see when you're no playing when you're getting paid so imagine going six weeks out the team <laughs> without getting paid oh my god uh, that just, a major head loss you just wouldn't be there would you <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got a series of, we've got a series of questions here we're going to ask ask a couple of these quick fire questions Shanker's got, Shanker's got a few quick fire questions then we'll ask you a couple of things and then we'll move on to f- some fine questions I asked somebody to give me these. I'll ask you both this question. Which game was harder, the final against Talbot or the semi-final second leg against Bonnie Rig? Oh. Semi-final, I would say. I'd say the semi-final. I'm I think, going semi. I think in a cup final. I mean, whatever happens, it, happens. I mean, it it's takes care of itself. It takes care of itself. It takes care of itself. At least the semi-final. Um, especially been away for the semi-final as well. Do you know what I mean? And, there was a bit of kind of bother before the game, there was a bit of bother after the game. I mean, the supporters buses were getting backed and boys were getting done in the pubs coming into the game. Do you know what I mean? So there was a lot of, a lot of things happening, but no, I would say the semi-final. Best, I am the same. I'm best semi-final. player you've played with at Glen Afton? It's a hard one, actually. It's, it's a hard one. No. Uh, player. Um, 
Be my guffy, I'd say, would be up there. It was only in loan light, but it was unbelievable at training and stuff. I used to just put his bib off him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just rip his clothes off him because I couldn't catch him. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to even hanky the players that were, were in the teams. Try to, try to Me jumble him, was very good as well. I think we've seen, I think we've seen Dan Austin obviously in the, the Scottish Cup final yeah. that as well played really really well. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I think I think he was one of the players in the Glens where they're probably playing below their cell a wee bit. I mean, I think there was a, I think there was a few of the boys that he could have easily played a lot higher than obviously what they were playing. Mm-hmm. Wee Kearnsey, same with Wee Kearnsey. Wee Kearnsey is one of the Wee Kearnsey was a solid seven or eight every week. Like, oh, we saw some bar pack, Johnny. He was never. He <laughs> just. That. Be a steady seven eight every week. Like, it was brilliant. Some left peg as well. Your favourite memory going after an outside win in the league in the cup? Well, there the West, I'd say for me, when we won the West at Pollock, it was really good. I think, I'd go for that. I think it could be... Don't say leaving. I think scoring scoring the free kick at at Beechwood obviously I think that was the same game I think Chesney got injured I don't think he got sent off I think Chesney didn't align and he started doing that I think he went down to 10 men and I mean obviously you you, you played out the the kind of 1-0 win I think that was was a right good game Maybe that game my fucking bit fell up yet. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's tried to play a pass up the park and just a slap. And I was like, what the fucking is that? He turned in and his bit's lying wide open. <laughs> oh, that was black. I think that could be my worst moment. Uh, oh, <laughs> right, last question's we Could gone after have made it further into the Scottish Cup if they weren't redrawn against Livingston? Well, I think we get drew the Queen of the South at home, mm-hmm. but that would obviously still have been a hard task because obviously the championship side it would have been a hard game. But the pitch is a shambles. Like I don't know if they had a fancy coming up and try to get the boy into playing that. You don't know, but I never right. know. Really. I think it was just just the kind of luck of the draw on it. I mean, you could you could have still got. I mean, lower league teams, you could have still got. I mean, Highland League teams, I mean, you end up drawing Livingston, do you know what I mean? It was, it was a hard, hard tie name there, if it was home or anything, do you know what I mean? Shank, I'll see when you're playing in the Scottish Cup, do you feel pressure? Because it's that, like, how big a, a title are you seeing like, going to Hearts? Was it was it Hibs as well, you were at? No, the Hearts, they played, the only way they played Hearts when I was there, and they played them before I was there as well. Aye. Do you feel, so, do you feel I, pressure going there, like? No, I think it's one of the games it's, I don't know what the boys feel. It's almost like a free hit, isn't it? Like, uh, you're not expecting it. So, pressure's on them. It's it's a lose-lose for them. If, if they win, they're expected to win. And if they get, if there's a shock, then it's a disaster. So, it's a free hit for, for us going, I think playing most teams in the Scottish Cup, you're expected to win your first couple of qualified runs or whatever. But, but once you, you start getting teams like Livingston or, or even a United, I know... I know they never won, but you're still not expected anything for the game, so it's almost like a no pressure going play it. And sometimes that can work in your favour as well. If there's no pressure on you to win. Mm-hmm. Best character you've ever met in a dressing room? Hmm. Davey Miller for me, maybe, or Adam Strachan. <laughs> 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 I'd go Stevie Miller. He was just why up to our miles back. <laughs> so, yeah, was, honestly, what, what, what I'll say is. It must have been bad if you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you not see the post in the lad Bible about the guy that woke up in somebody's house? It was at his oh, party. Aye. It's him. Aye, that <laughs> <was him>. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went to the neighbour's house and the woman come down and found him on the couch and they just aye, lay aye. there and slept. Well, that was him. <laughs> Thank you, Tad. This was Ryan Boyd. Oh, aye. So it was, it was at the Glens when I first went, and I think he's a, if you were a, a young boy, I think you'd have been dreading coming into training and coming into games and that because he was just a fucking menace. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, you'd be, 
then a team talk or talking after the game or something like that, and you turn around with him and, and he'd be standing there on the buff or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just an unbelievable guy. I mean, married with kids and that, but he still acted as if he was a, a daft wee boy. <laughs> right, last of these questions, then we'll pass it on to Shankers. Best story you've got for the dre- for addressing room? Uh, I've got a decent one. Takes the piss out my cell a bit, like, but <laughs> um, when I first broke into the Glens team, Dan Henderson was the manager, and I was just kind of on and off, but I got put a good bunch of performances there. And Hendo said to me after a game one day, he's like, Jess, what are you doing different? He's like, you're playing off a good thing now, and I was like, ah, I'll stop going out on a Friday night. <laughs> 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 All the boys just liked it and they didn't know what to do and Hendo just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, that's it. <laughs> still, ain't, still ain't, there's a, a good few of the shankers at Air United. I know, so I know that he'd spoke about a couple of them. I still think the one way Big Kev Kyle and Conan Dyson was unbelievable <laughs> during, the, during the game and that and uh, Kel's on that was calling him Bison because obviously the size he's had Boggs up to Kev and Shankers wants a layoff and it's Dyson Dyson <laughs> what did you say there Dyson yeah, Dyson get the guy after the game the team talking that and uh, Marco's like we've done this done that blah 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 and it's like Shankers what did you what did you call him Kev <laughs> Shankers just sitting there Dyson that's his name isn't it Dyson <laughs> <laughs> Shank, have you any quick fire questions for the, the boys? Uh, I've got a couple. I think you covered a couple of them, but um, would you rather, who would you rather play in your team, Messi or Ronaldo? I'll go Messi. Nah, mate, Messi all day. Messi all day. Uh, all day. Uh, would you rather win the league or win the Scottish Cup? Scottish. Uh, the Scottish Cup, probably. Uh, Toughest opponent that you've played against, like as in directly, maybe let's say because you're right, but a left winger or a crazy or a striker. Um, I think you probably covered that earlier. So. I'll go Graham Wilson or Gormley. Between the two, I just knew I was in for a battle whenever I was playing Talbot because Gormley would just try to back into his arse and his big thighs. <laughs> and Get some thighs over Graham. Him. Graham just hurt you an elbow every time you went for a header, so you just know you're in for a scrap. And I played against the two boys, like, so, yeah. I, I, I think the, the first doing I got was against Willie Gibson in loan at United when he was at Stranoe. Aye, that Queen of the South game, was it not? Queen of the South game, not Queen of the South game, aye, in fact, aye. Marco says to his eye, Willie Gibson's a good, good player, hit him. Is it early doors? <laughs> he's about two minutes in, I'm booked, and he's just lying in a crumple heap in the stones. Um, <laughs> I was a wee bit of a kind of awakening. Uh, next one. Your idol when you grew up, who, who did you idolise and look up to when you were, you were playing when you were younger? I love Stephen Gerrard. Uh, I, was, I just same, carried Liverpool his cell really some of his goals just unbelievable just no tappings they just absolute screamers to win his team games <laughs> and <just laughs> unbelievable <laughs> I think because I, I, I was a striker back in the day it was uh, Brazilian Ronaldo I love mm-hmm. love watching him um, obviously Real Madrid and Brazil and stuff and it's not until you're a wee bit older when you start watching the Inter days and Ajax days and everyone else I mean um, a PSG days you say I mean it's an unbelievable player mm-hmm. uh, The best player you've played with? <sighs> no just the, uh, the Glens can just any, any team that you've played with uh, <sighs> Probably that many. Like, there's so many players. <laughs> Who was one that you would just start up and you'd be like, oh, wow, Ken, that he would do something again and you just hope, Ken, wow, or something Leon, would change again for you? Leon Murphy, probably. Ah, he's, he's quality, that boy. 
you knew what he was going to do. He's just a bit like that left fit. He just always <laughs> went to own to and he just it's like, like me, so you couldn't stop him. You knew he was going to check, but you just you couldn't yeah. stop him for getting on to it. But yeah, I yeah. remember Leon. I'd say then. When we were younger, uh, Dylan McGeer. I don't know if you, you remember uh, the goal he scored for Celtic against St Mum. And he's picked up the ball for the edge of their box, dribbled the full line through the park and scored. I mean, Dylan, in the youth scene, we Dylan would have done that two, three, four times a season. Um, and kind of similar again to what Ange, Ange Marine gave him saying earlier on. But just a case of, aye, that's, that's what it is. Aye, oh well. <laughs> uh, this last one's just for Chelsea. Would you rather play with Cumnor or Talbot? <laughs> <laughs> or, Talbot. or retire? Or retire? <laughs> <laughs> Talbot. Talbot. I'll not ask Cody that in case he, in case he gets released. <laughs> 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 right, we've, we've, we've opened up to the floor a couple of questions. We got one for Kyle from Ryan Lynch. Kyle once told me he went fishing with Big John Daly during a Rangers pre season trip, so I'm just wondering if you could ask him if he sat on the side of the water holding John's rod all day or did they actually do some fishing? <laughs> oh, my. Uh, it was obviously the first proper pre season uh, trip we, we went away. Um, we were in Germany and uh, the kind of complex of the wee kind of, kind of like kind of back fishery back beside it. Um, after training one of the days, the boys said, no, we'll go fishing. I've like, never been fishing, I'll just go. Um, <laughs> I, I held his rod all day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch it? Hi. <laughs> 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 Uh, another question as well for, for Chessie from Alan Muddy. Ask Ryan if you put a pie in the microwave at defrost, does it cool it down? Ask him how it felt <laughs> to have his boy in the park with him when he lifted the Scottish Cup. We'll start off with the pie first. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, when I was younger, I was, uh, I was ever at a butcher's for my, break, my lunch. <laughs> and they put a pie in the microwave and it was... Come out and it was absolutely scadding hot. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I asked the woman to put it back in the, back in the microwave and put it in the frost and kill it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, totally. <laughs> I mean, so. Second question How did it feel to have your boy in the park when you lifted the Scottish Cup? Oh, it's. Amazing. It's just something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. If I don't get there again, I'll always have that to look back on. So it's, uh, it's up there with the best feelings of my life. Brilliant. Just as well, before we, we, we finish up, what's your, what's your plans for the, the season? He's going to stay where he's at or are he's... Like... Uh, I'll be staying where I am and then obviously if next season kicks ahead, I'll, obviously, as I said earlier on, I've got a few teams phoning and stuff and I said I'll wait till the end of the season and I'll speak to everybody. Blind, blind player coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'll decide there and then <laughs> I'm down. Okay, you still, do you, are you just going to look to just play as much football as you can? Uh, I, still, I suppose the kind of same as Chesey. Um, I think obviously with everything that's going on just now, I mean, I think Fip is taking a wee bit of a kind of back seat um, for a lot of things. Um, so it's just trying to I suppose keep your kind of your foot in the door. I suppose do you know what I mean and try and take away and stuff. But I hopefully will still be at Comic obviously for the foreseeable. I just want to thank the boys as well for coming on, Ryan and Kyle. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show. Hope you've enjoyed Aye. it. Thanks, enjoyed it. We're going to wrap up the show for this week, but we will also be doing another watch along on Wednesday night. Myself and Shankers will be doing a watch along of St Mirren versus Celtic. You wasn't for that, Shankers? Uh, I'm on the same. <laughs> <laughs> as well, I just want to thank everybody that tuned in and as well, please give us a like and subscribe on all our social media channels. Thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.